What's up everyone, Joy here with Big Girls Garage and today I'm going to show you how to replace a window regulator and window motor on this C1500. We're also going to test the switch to make sure our motor is actually bad. This process is the same between the 88 to 94 Chevrolet CK Series pickups as well as the Suburban. So the first thing we're going to remove is this single Phillips head screw that's in the armrest. After that, go ahead and grab your favorite trim tool. And we're going to go ahead and remove the panel around the door handle and the switches. Use the trim tool to get a little leverage and pop the panel out. The panel is only held by clips, so just go ahead and pull it to release it from the clips. Now to remove the door panel, you don't have to completely take this off, just leave it hanging for now. There are some door panel clips across the sides and bottom of the door panel. We're going to go ahead and pop those out with the removal tool and I'll show you what they look like later. Feel around the door panel and just go ahead and keep popping off those clips. Once the clips have been removed, the door panel should be a little floppy, enough where you could just pull the lower portion out and push it up to remove it. Now let's feed that plastic trim through the door panel and it should be able to remove the door panel freely. These are the clips I was telling you about. They go directly into the door. They break pretty often, and if you break them, don't worry about it. They're cheap, and you can pick them up pretty much everywhere, Amazon or auto parts stores. Now that we got the door panel removed, let's go ahead and pull the paper that's glued onto the door. You don't have to remove it all. Just get it out of the way for now. Down here in the corner is our window motor. We're going to go ahead and unplug the wires feeding to it. It's just a compressed style clip. You just need to push down on the little tab, and it should release. We're going to use a circuit tester, also known as a power probe, to go ahead and test our switch. You can find these cheap on Amazon or any auto parts stores. We're going to go and clip it to a piece of metal. We're going to use the inside of the door jam. It's very important that you make sure your ignition is on. We're going to go ahead and plug the probe into the wiring and hit the switches to test the wiring. There are two terminals that you're going to want to test on the wiring, and you're going to hit the up and down switch on the window, and if it lights up, there's power. So as you can see, we're having power on the upside of the wiring and the downside of the wiring. So that means our switch is good and the motor is getting power, which ultimately means our motor isn't turning when it's getting power. Bad motor. We're going to go ahead and remove all the bolts around the door. It's 7 millimeters all around with one 10 millimeter. Those white plastic pieces are just clips that will pop out. Next, we're going to need to remove the switches. There are the black, white, and gray switches. You're going to need to remove those black caps on top first. Those are locking clips. And then underneath and on top, there are little tabs that you're going to have to pull up on to remove the wiring. I found it easiest to use a pick and a screwdriver to remove these. Go ahead and use whatever tools you want. Just be careful not to break anything. Take your time because these can be a little frustrating. Just make sure you don't break any clips. Now that the switches are done, we're going to go ahead and follow the wiring up into the door lock and we're going to have to remove the wiring that plugs into the door lock. It's another compressed style clip so you can go ahead and stick a screwdriver in it to go ahead and decompress it and pull it out. Now we're going to go ahead and just start uh, removing the wiring. There's going to be these little tabs that hold on wirings into the door panel. We're going to have to remove those. Found it easiest just to take a pair of pliers on the other side, squeeze the tabs together, and pull it through on the other side. Go ahead and loosen up the wiring just to get things out of your way. In order to completely remove the wiring, you're going to need to drill in these rivets to go ahead and remove that panel. But I don't think you need to. Some people will tell you you have to, but I'll show you how to do it with just leaving it how it is. Next, we're going to release these metal rods that connect to the door lock and the door handle. All you got to do is push down these lower retaining clips, and once you push them down, you can just pop out the little metal rod. 
Then go ahead and pop out the little guide clips so they're out of the way. Once you do the door handle, now let's do the door lock. Go ahead and same thing, pop out the retaining clip, then pop out the metal rod. Pull this rod out of this guide clip too. To remove it out of this clip, all you do is pull it down. Now that the rods are released, we're going to go ahead and just slide out the regulator out of the railing in the window. It's best to turn the panel about 45 to 90 degrees as you go ahead and slide it out. Since we didn't completely remove the wiring, we're just going to set it aside for now. There are four rivets that hold in the window regulator and we're going to have to actually drill those out. Grab your favorite drill bit and start drilling. Once I drilled through the rivet, I went ahead and grabbed a needle nose pliers to go ahead and remove the rest of it. Out with the old, in with the new. Since we drilled out the rivets, grab the nut and bolts of your choosing and go ahead and use those in to hold the regulator down. Make sure you tighten them. Off camera, we actually put a little bit of thread locker on it. That's up to you. This part of the regulator goes into this part of the door. As you can see, our regulator isn't lined up with the rails right now. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the motor to move the regulator. Now that we've plugged in our motor, we're going to plug in the driver's window switch that we need and we're going to turn on the ignition. With the ignition on, use the switch to go ahead and adjust the window motor until you get it to line up into place. Once it's in the rail, go ahead and lower the window regulator all the way down to fit the window in that's in our door. Go ahead and just slide it back into the rail on the window. Now it's time to put back the rods that go into the door lock and the door handle. Grab that retaining clip and go ahead and slide it back on and push the rod right through it. Once you do the door lock, go ahead and do the door handle. I use a plier just to squeeze down the retaining clip. I push the rod guide just back through the little clip. Don't forget your retaining clips. Now go ahead and plug the wires back into the door lock. Now we're going to put back the metal door panel, so go ahead and line those white plastic clips into the holes. After you put together, go ahead and grab all your 7mm with that 110 and go ahead and put those back in. Now go ahead and remove that door switch so we could go ahead and put the wiring back together. Go ahead and clip the wiring harness back together. Our paper wasn't too damaged so we went ahead and just push it onto the old glue. You could do the same or use tape or new glue, up to you. See the door panel has this little ledge here that goes onto this upper part of the door. It's easiest to put that on first. I found it easiest to put that ledge back into the door first and then start clipping in the door panel. Go ahead and put in the screw that's in the armrest. All that's left is to plug in the switches. Don't forget your safety caps and then clip the whole plastic trim back into the door panel. And that's all for this job. Wasn't too bad. You guys can do it at home and save yourself tons of money. 
Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also check out our Instagram and TikTok. We post there as well.